Here, do this. Everybody throw your hand up with it closed like this. And on the count of three, I want you just to go here. Okay? One, two, three. Yeah. Now you just tossed it over on Jesus. And he said, cast your care upon the Lord. Amen. For he cared for you. Woo! Welcome to Crosspoint on a Wednesday night. What? what? You go a lot of places. You don't get this on Wednesday night. So I encourage you to link and post on your Facebook, Twitters, all of our services. Let people see what God is doing even on Wednesday night. Put it out there. Say, look, look, look. If you go to a church that don't have church on Wednesday night, you just want to come soak. I promise you. This is waters worth soaking in. Come on. That's right. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here's what I want to do. This is just why God's leading me. And, and I, I just got to obey God. If, if Reggie, when you get done moving that here, I want you to go and take up about five or ten of those buckets. And I want you just to just lay them across the back. I want you to block the left door and the right door. And we'll just go out the center door and, and put those put those buckets and put a bunch out there. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to let my friend, Kendon Alexander, if you've never heard this guy preach, Woo! he's the whitest black man or the blackest white man. I don't know really what how to say it in D.C. <laughs> but he is amazing. Yes, yeah. And so um, I want to give him all the time possible. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn it over to him. I'm putting the buckets back there because I want you to give. What you give tonight is going to go to Kendon outside of the tide. And, and earmarked monies, monies that you, you you know you set aside for special things, but all the offering, we're going to put it in there, and we've already decided how we're going to bless him. Um, we want you to get in on it. How about that? That's how we roll here. I don't never wait on offerings to come in because you know he might say something that challenges some of him. You you know I like him. He'll tell you about like I will. If that offends you, then you need to come down here and get saved so that so that you can still go to heaven. When it's all said and done. Preachers don't, you know, not every preacher. They are some preachers who, who they come to offend you. That's their whole mode. They want to make you mad and frustrated. But I know Kendon Alexander, and I, he, he's cut from the same fall. And I, I say that with all due respect to him. <laughs> he, you know, cut from the same fall that I am. But we don't come to offend you. If the word offends you, then that's what, that's what it's meant to do. The Bible says that Jesus come come to, to bring a sword and sometimes it cuts. I don't know what he's going to preach tonight. I haven't asked him. I haven't told him nothing that's going on in this church. So if he hits you between the eyeballs, don't you dare let the devil tell you that or this is total pain. I haven't talked to the guy more than three times in the last year. He don't call me. I'm, you know. <laughs> he said, I oh, know you did. But um, I want you to. How many of you have never heard Kendon Alexander preach? Raise your hand. Oh my God. Oh, how many of you have? Like, well, tell them to a shout. They're about to get blessed. Come on, one, two, three. Put your hands together and invite Kendon Alexander to this pulpit. God bless you. Praise the, praise the Lord. Amen. I'll be glad to be in the house of the Lord. A couple of you are glad to be. I said, I'll be really glad to be in the house of the Lord. He said too many kind things to me. Now y'all like, what's he going to say? What are you going to bring? And so, uh, uh, man, we're just going to have a good time tonight. Can we have a good time tonight? Yeah. All right, let's go through a few things so I can get to preaching and going. Uh, first of all, I want to give honor to the man and woman of God of the house. Uh, what, what, a, what a blessing. You can hold that for a second. We want to, we want to definitely honor this man. I, I tell you, this this man has been a blessing to me. Um, man, I, I would say he's 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 been my Ezekiel. I was laying down in a valley of broken pieces. And you can have a lot of friends, but you don't really have a lot of friends. And I called 
awesome folks, and you know, oh yeah, yeah, but this man came down like Ezekiel and he prophesied. He prophesied and the bones started coming together. He prophesied and breath started coming back in me. He prophesied and the sinew started coming on, on me and I raised up. I, I'm, I'm only here tonight declaring the word of the Lord and doing what God's called me to do because of this man right here. Despite what you would ever hear or what people say, I know how church folks are. This man right here, as he's in the pulpit, is how he is outside the pulpit. He cares for people. He's not worried about anything else. He's just worried about souls being saved and lives being changed. And when I went through one of the hardest times of my life, this man right here took me in and spoke life. And so I stand as, as an honor today to even be here. And I want to make sure that we honor him in the way he needs to be honored. So when I count the three, if you would, just on my behalf. You might think, well, that gets on my nerves sometimes. Just on my behalf. <laughs> Just on my behalf of what he's done in my life and the blessing he has been to me, if you would, give him the best hand clap of praise, the shout, clap to your hands, turn purple. I mean, do what you have to do. But let him know, on my behalf, for me being here, there's a lot of ministers, and many of you know, a lot of ministers that, that have taken their lives here in Atlanta, and you've seen it. This man, I, I was in, a, I was in a, I was in a place, and I know I was preaching, out preaching, and traveling, and doing that, and souls getting saved, and people getting delivered. I mean, I couldn't break out of this thing. I couldn't break out of it. And this man came in and just continued, just continued to speak life to me. So let's honor him on the count of three. One, two, three. Come on, stand to your feet. <laughs> Wow. 
I average two to three funerals per week for those ranging from 18 years old all the way up to 45 years old. They have this game they, they like to play, and, and it's, it's it, and the crazy thing about it, it doesn't matter uh, uh, how much you have in the bank account. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter who family, what side of the track. It, 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 it ain't bias. It's, it, it'll attack, and so they play this. They play this game, or they have these parties. What they do a lot is, you know, how you have a bowl for Halloween, and you put the candy in there. Well, they they don't put candy in there. They go and through the week, what they do is they either break into grandma's house, or get into grandma's house, or get into mama's house, or go to a friend's house, and they go into the cabinets and they try to find any type of drug they can find, prescription drug. And then they take that bowl, they all meet up at the party, they take that bowl, and then they empty all the prescription drugs out into that bowl. So you don't, there's no name on it, no expiration, not anything what it is. And then they all go and start grabbing handfuls and taking it. And so a lot of them, uh, you know, my age are just just dying. I mean, they're just, they're just overdosing. Um, and not only with that, it's, it's you know, suicide is, is as an all-time high. We had a... Uh, a family, the the boy was a star football player, was on, you know, the papers and everything, was being recruited by a lot of Ohio State, a bunch of other different colleges, and but his, uh, his, him and his brother and his mom, and his mom had a heroin addiction, and was trying to fight it, trying to fight it, couldn't fight it, and, and you know, and they're, and I know pastors preached on this, and, and I need to get into my message, but I just want you to know what's happening with me. Um, there are spirits that will reign over an area. Right. Yeah. We call them territorial spirits. That will reign over, and over this area, you know, suicide has become a, a, a major influence in this area. Uh, this lady, and I'm going to go rather quickly for the sake of time, this lady was bad on this addiction so strong, and that spirit had gotten on her that in town there's a, a bank and it's got like 10 floors to it or whatever. It's the tallest place in there with the with the bank. She went in one day right before closing and hid in the bathroom. And when they closed up, she went upstairs and jumped off the roof, taking her life, leaving the two boys. You know, and having been the football player, it was everywhere. It was all over the news. We had um, one councilman. Nothing was wrong in his life. He wasn't sick or anything. Uh, his kids, you know, married, got kids. He's a grandparent. He's a councilman. Got a great business in the area. And the only thing his wife can explain that she said is that something had got on him. That's what she told me. Something had got on him. And what he had done is that he went on the highway. We got a major highway that goes right through town. He drove his car, parked off to the side of the road, waited till a tractor trailer was coming down, barreling about 80 miles per hour, and jumped out in front of it. No one could figure out. He wasn't in debt. He wasn't sick. He wasn't anything. The only thing his wife kept saying is that these, this last week, something had got on him. And so these are the demonic spirits, the, the, the oppression. And so we went in and, and, you know, a lot of this has been happening. And my wife and I, we went in, we got a team. And uh, so we launched, we launched about, oh, about seven months ago, we launched this church. And uh, so, I mean, we've been doing all right. We're doing all right. We got about 90 folks. We're not as big as big time as y'all. But out of, out of the 90 folks that we got, 75 of the, 75 to 80, uh, of the people are first time converts, have never been in church in their life. You know, so for us, you know, being raised in Pentecostal, it's a little different because I always have to explain myself. So if I take a long time and like just get to the point, it's I'm so used to it because, you know, for us, I mean, when you first have service, like, come on, lift your hands. Like, okay, why am I lifting my hand? You know, what, what's going on? So we had to talk about lifting other hand, uh, like offering, you know, we had a lady come up to me and, and uh, she said, they handed me this thing. I said, it's an offering envelope. Okay, why? I said, you, I don't know. I said, well, you know, it's a help with the church and, you know, and everything that, you know, begin to explain about tithing and giving and all that. I've never heard such a thing. Do they do this in every church? I said, yeah, they do it in every church. I said, you know, then at the end of the year, you get a tax write-off. Do you get a tax write-off? 
Pastor, I'm giving every Sunday. <laughs> the Lord, lady, for the fuck in your heart, you go in. So, uh, but we got a great thing going. Uh, people are getting delivered. People are getting set free. Uh, we're seeing souls get saved every week. But, but we're in a battle. So number one, pray for us. Just pray. I mean, we are in a, it's not, you know, when I say war zone, you know, I, I worked in uh, California and I literally worked uh, with gang members and was in a war zone, been shot at that. But this is a different type of war zone. Uh, we're in it just every week, you know, every week. And, and I, I had one of the, uh, the chief of police goes to our church. And uh, so that's opened the door for me to be able to be in the city a little bit more and for prayer and stuff like that. So they had a, a, a thing where they were doing a prayer for some police officers that had been shot. And uh, they asked me to do the prayer and the mayor comes up to me and, uh, you know, because every time I, I plug, you know, plug different things. And the mayor says, you know, do you really think you could rid this place of, of, of the drugs and the issues with the kids? I said, I might not get them all. I said, but if I can pull one or two up out of hell, I'll just keep going and I'll keep preaching and I'll keep declaring the word of the Lord. So that's what we have going on. And, and, and Bishop and, and Bishop plays a huge part of that. You know, y'all y'all are part of it because you're a part of, of Bishop, you know. And so it's it, we call it Impact Church. Um, but if it had a subtitle, it'd be called Cross Point because we wouldn't even be at that point position or at that place if it wasn't for pastor and his wonderful wife uh, speaking life unto us and when they spoke life unto us we're able to go and speak life to people can you say amen to that amen. so when you give i know pastor put buckets in that when you give everything you have goes to the church um we uh, i'm trying to think without getting in trouble what to say we, we started from scratch. We started from scratch and didn't have much. We got a we got a we got a little drum set and I got a little piano that I busted out from somebody and from another church. Kind of, I mean, I didn't take it. But, you know, <laughs> I maybe borrowed it for a long period of time. So that's what we have. We don't have a worship team. Uh, we got some singers. We're doing tracks and stuff like that. But hey, people are getting saved. People are getting touched. People. I, I, mean, I don't remember when y'all started. So y'all, come on. I remember y'all, some of y'all, you didn't raise your hand, you didn't know me, but I was there back in the day. I was there back in the day. The rooms weren't even done, man. They invited me to preach, and they oh, go to our changing room. They brought me in this beautiful room back here. I thought, man, we've come a long way. They put me in the changing room on the other one, and it had, I don't think, no, I don't think it. Fourth level. Fourth level? Yeah. Man. I mean, it just, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. God is good. So whatever you give tonight, it's going to our uh, our plant. I mean, we're just doing whatever we can to touch lives and change lives. And that's, we, we've sacrificed and done everything that we can. The kids sacrifice. Uh, uh, we rent a place out, so we're moving our stuff. And we just get up. Our kids get up with me and move stuff. And 